So uh, we are normally the Western Reserve School of Cooking, but we're coming from our home kitchen today. Uh, this whole uh, COVID-19 has kind of thrown a, a little bit of a, thrown us for a loop on how to do classes. So we've been actually doing a lot of these on Facebook as well. So we are going to do, um, basically, even though it's the evening, we're gonna do kind of an afternoon tea theme. And before I get started into what we're gonna make, I did kind of wanna look up a little bit of the history of what um, high tea or afternoon tea is, and I found out that they're two different things. Uh, high tea really was more of the working class um, meal taken in the evening. It's basically what we would call dinner. And then uh, after a little more research, there's something called afternoon tea, which is what we think of the tea sandwiches and the scones and the, and, um, the you know, having your, your cup of tea and everything and all the little pastries. And that comes from the early 19th century, from, excuse me, Anna, the seventh Duchess of Bedford, and I'm assuming that's not Bedford, Ohio, um, and complained in the middle of the afternoon that she has sinking feeling in her stomach because during that time there were only two meals during the day you would have your breakfast and then you would have your dinner and so usually in the afternoon uh, there wasn't or we didn't they didn't have a lunch the way we have a lunch so she started by taking a little spot of tea and some snacks if you will in her in her bedroom and then as that went on, she started to invite friends over in the afternoon to have uh, some snacks and tea with her and the rest, <coughs> excuse me, is history. So we are going to make today or this evening some scones and two examples of a tea sandwich. And then I have actually another little thing that I wanna to throw together a little bit later that's pretty easy to do. So the scones, we're gonna start by making a cranberry orange scone. And these are really easy to make. <coughs> I've got here two cups of all-purpose flour. We need a stick or four ounces of cold unsalted butter. So we want to get that really broken up into the flour. The easiest way for me to do it was that I chopped up the butter, chilled it, and I put it in this little food processor. Carl can get in there with a little bit of the flour, and I'm just pulsing it, just to kind of break that up. Because if your butter's too lumpy in there, it's gonna melt out and fry the scones. So into our flour, we are putting four teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt. All right, we're gonna put in the rest of our butter. Now what I did so that the butter didn't just smear was that I took a couple tablespoons of this flour and I put it in here with the butter so that it would kind of break up rather than smear the butter because we do want to have that cold. So we're going to get this all stirred together and alternately if you don't have that or the ability to do that you can use a pastry blender and just kind of get everything mixed up nice. My oven is at 425 degrees. Get that off the pastry blender. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in our flavoring, which is going to be some dried cranberries. You could do bright, dried blueberries, you could do raisins, you could do whatever you want. I'd stick with a dried fruit because a fresh berry is going to give too much liquid out in the scone itself. And then we want to do some fresh orange zest. So I have an orange here and I'm just going to take my microplane and I'm just going to go along the top of the orange just to get that fresh zest. Now, you don't want to do this ahead of time. There's a lot of oils in the zest. And if you do this too far ahead of time, those oils and that fragrant, um, nice fragrant orange that you get out of this, or lemon, if you do lemon, is going to disappear. 
and you just want to make sure that you get the zest and not that white pith underneath. So we're going to go ahead and tap that in. I'm going to put this off to the side because we're going to need that later. All right. That. And I'm just going to go ahead and get a little spatula here and I'm just going to stir this up. I want to get those cranberries coated with the flour and butter mixture. All right, so now I'm going to add in some milk. It's three quarters of a cup of milk. You may need more, you may need less, just depends. And we're going to go ahead and pour that in. And let's start with about half a cup. Now we don't want to work this too much because like other pastry, we don't want to develop the gluten. We want these to be nice and flaky. Now you can make these, cut them out, and freeze them so that when you have guests coming over for tea, now socially distanced on your patio, you can um, just take them right from the freezer and into the oven. And then you can have some nice fresh scones. You can even bake them and freeze them. Just reheat them in the oven for a little bit. But again, we just kind of want to fold all this together. And I usually pat this out into two, um, two portions. And then as far as how you want to cut them, you know, you can do them a couple of different ways. I'm going to go wash my hands here for a second. And I want to clear off my tray. Somewhere to go. And I have a tray here that's got one of these silicone baking mats on it. So we're going to go ahead and put these in the oven first because they're going to take a little bit of time. So the other thing I always have is a bowl of flour. I call this bench flour. Oops. See, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself. I forgot to put the sugar in. We're going to get the sugar mixed in there right now. It's okay. I'll get it. I'll get it worked in when you're not eating these. That should have gone in with the flour, but we'll get it in there. Now, not that big a deal. See, we all make mistakes. And almost there. Again, I want to be careful though. I don't want to over mix this. And we're almost there. See, it's right in front of my nose and I forgot it. So don't, don't be like me, don't forget it. I made a right. meatloaf last night and I forgot the eggs. I found it five hours later. Well, there you go. Probably had a little, it was probably a little dry. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take some of this flour and I'm just gonna put it down on my board. A little on top. Now, like I said, I like to cut this in half. And you can, you, if you're cutting these, you're going to end up with some scraps, which you can reuse because um, otherwise they're wasted. But what you don't want to do is just knead it back and forth a lot. You don't want to over, overdo it. All right, so I have a nice round there and you can pat it out or you can use a rolling pin, but patting it out is fine because I want there to be some height on this. I find a little dowel like this to work well too, rather than a big rolling pin. So if you wanted triangular scones, you could just go ahead and mark them with your knife into like six or eight pieces, just kind of halfway through, and then just bake them that way, and then you pull them apart when you're done. But I'm gonna use kind of a little fluted cutter which I do want to dip in the flour. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make some cuts, just, just like so. Just like that, and you want a little height on them. You're gonna go right here onto 
your pan. But it is a good idea to dip that cutter in the flour. So now that I have these the scrap pieces here, I can refold it and pat it out again. And sometimes the cranberries or the dried fruit, it's kind of hard to cut through that, so it might not come completely clean. And I'm just going to pat this out. Now, if it's getting too warm, you don't want that butter to get too warm. You can always pop this in the fridge for a little bit. But they're pretty easy to just sort of pat out with your hand. And cut some more. Catherine, did you use whole milk or 2% or? To, yeah, you can use milk or butter. I'm going to put a little milk on there. And then I'm going to put on some um, derma sugar or sugar in the raw is nice. So I have my other one here. I met in the mixture when you mix the, the milk that you put in when you mixed it up. Was that? Oh, the, it's just whole milk. There's no, there's no butter. The butter is in the flour mix. And it's just, but you could use buttermilk if you wanted to. And I don't think you would change the amount of butter you put into it. It's just going to give it more of a tang. Carl, could you lower the camera just a tad? We can't see Catherine's hands. Perfect, thank you. All right, so you're gonna get a good dozen or more scones out of here. And Catherine, how much milk did you use? I used three quarters of a cup. Okay, thank you. Milk, and then I'm gonna, I have a little extra milk that I am going to brush on top of the scones so that I can um, put a little sugar on them. All right, so this is my scrap here. So we'll just get just a couple more out of here, just so I can get like two more, get a, a even dozen. So this is definitely gonna make this size probably at least a dozen and a half to two dozen scones. And then you can put whatever you want in these, whatever flavorings you want. The original recipe had no flavoring in it at all, and I thought it needed some, some uh, added cranberry and orange I thought would be good. All right, put this off to the side. You like getting that wet flour off your hands. All right, so let me clean this up a minute and then we're gonna go ahead and get these in the oven. So in this little dish here, I've got just a little bit of milk. And all I'm doing is just painting a little milk on here. My oven set at 425. And derma sugar is uh, like that sugar in the raw. It's kind of got large crystals. It's really good on uh, the tops of muffins and scones and things like that. This particular one, I believe came from King Arthur. So it's almost like a brown, like a, a natural brown sugar, but it's it's got a larger crystal to it. So we're just gonna put a little bit of that on top and you don't have to do that. It just adds a nice little caramelization and crunch to it. And these aren't really gonna spread out much, but about a dozen to a tray is good. All right, there we go. So these are gonna go in the oven. And hopefully somebody will remind me that they're there. All right, so give me a second here to clean this up. 
and we're going to move on to um, our smoked salmon and our cucumber sandwiches. How long are they in the oven? I'll set my timer. Um, I'd set your timer for about 12 minutes. Okay, we'll let you know. I've got mine set. All right. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get my cucumbers ready for the sandwiches. And I don't want to just slice and use cucumbers because cucumbers have a lot of liquid in them. So I need to encourage some of that excess water to come out. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to get a bowl here and I've got a little bit of white vinegar. I'm going to put that in the bowl. And then I'm going to put a nice pinch of salt in there. Just kind of let that dissolve. So you want to thinly slice your cucumber. I find that this Ben Reiner slicer works very well. Uh, we do call it the finger amputator, so you have to be careful. But we're just going to have, go ahead and slice. And I use the English hot house cucumber. I don't peel them. But you can if you like. And we have some nicely sliced cucumbers here. And we're just going to go ahead and put them in that vinegar and salt solution. We want to get them tossed around. All right. And then I have a colander. I'm going to do this over the sink. And I'm going to put them in the colander. And then I'm just going to let them sit here with, um, in the bowl with the colander there so that they can drain and any excess liquid can come out. So you want to let those sit for probably about 20 minutes. So by the magic of television or the magic of Zoom, I have some already done. I've got them dried out on paper towels. And these are just going to prevent the cucumbers from weeping and making your sandwiches soggy. Because nobody likes soggy sandwiches. So there you go. So there's your cucumbers. And we're going to use some butter with this. This is some really good, um, not English butter, but it is uh, French Plougra uh, butter. So it is a nice. Nice butter, uh, offset, small offset spatula, which I know you can purchase from um, a cookware shop that I think is located in downtown Hudson. Uh, hit us up. Because you want your butter soft, okay? So typically, the style of bread that you would use for making tea, tea sandwiches is called a Pullman loaf. And a Pullman loaf is made in a long, rectangular pan and it has a lid that slides on top so that when the bread bakes it prevents it from making the dome uh, that we know from sandwich bread. It's not an easy loaf to find and typically what you would do is not have it sliced in sandwiches or in slices for sandwiches. You would have the whole loaf and you would cut it lengthwise instead of crosswise so you get these long panels of, of bread which is not necessarily uh, easy to find so we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a couple of these i have a couple done and i'm going to take and this is just you know white white bread uh, you can use a cookie cutter you can cut them in the triangles i found i have this little heart cookie cutter so i'm going to use that Need some herbs, and I just did an order from the chef's garden out in Vermillion, and I got these great little micro herbs here that we're going to use. So I thought that would be nice. We need our cucumbers, we need our butter, we need a little bit of pepper. So we can use a little fresh ground pepper. And look at my cheat sheets here, and I think we're good. 
All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to take the back of the spatula because that's the easiest way to do this, and you're going to just spread that on there. Really use some good butter for this. You don't want to use margarine or, you know, one of those fake butter spreads. If you're going to have a tea sandwich, have a tea sandwich. And we're just going to give a nice coating with the butter. Uh, chicken salad, uh, egg salad are also very common uh, fillings for these. You can get very creative. There's all kinds of things that you can do. And go ahead and get that butter spread on there. Then I'm going to put a little fresh ground pepper on here. Just like so. I don't have the recipes in front of me, so I apologize if I'm not following exactly. And then we're going to go ahead and take our cucumbers. So we're just going to do some slices of cucumbers. These are not meant to be super thick cucumbers. We don't want really, we're not looking to make a Dagwood sandwich here. So a nice layer of the cucumbers. Anyone who wants to drive over to our house and sit on the driveway, I can um, um, shoot these out the window with a t-shirt cannon or a hot dog cannon like they do at the uh, ballpark. Let's see if you can catch them. All right, so then we're gonna go with our herbs, whatever herbs you like, basil, chives, we're gonna use these micro herbs on there. Those will be nice. So we're gonna do that. I know the Hudson Farmers Market starts this Saturday, so you should be able to find a lot of this kind of stuff there. All right. And now I'm just gonna sandwich it over, just like that. And you should get four sandwiches, and then whoever makes the sandwiches gets to eat the scraps. So I have this little heart-shaped cookie cutter, and if we position this right, we should get four sandwiches. Let's try and pop them out there. Per, uh, four hearts per sandwich is what I'm trying to say. Go. And then just push with your thumb and pull them out. But you want to make sure you get them close together because you want to get as many sandwiches as you can out of it. You don't want to just go in the middle because then you're not gonna get a complete sandwich out of it. All right, so all these scraps can be somebody's midnight snack. All right, I'm gonna grab a plate here to put the scraps on. All right, so we're gonna do that again. And again, just position so that you can try and get as many sandwiches out of this as you can. And can you, do you have to use a white bread? You don't have to use a white bread. You can use whatever bread you want. Um, some of the seeded breads can be a little harder to do this with. So you just do whatever you like. You can do little op open face sandwiches. And really in French or in France, they would call those canapes. So. There we go, we have some sandwiches. Now, if Carl can pan this way, I have this great uh, kind of tiered plate set up. I already got some scones made, and I'm gonna take this plate, and we'll go ahead and plate up our cucumber sandwiches. A few already made. So we'll just go ahead and put those on there. Put about a dozen on here. And then a little bit, I will also talk about other things that you can serve with your scones as an accompaniment. Now I have some nice, I got a nice herb garden going. So I have some nice lemon thyme here. So we can 
take some of the lemon thyme. Catherine, someone wants to know uh, if you can't find the Pullman loaf, what kind of bread would you use? I think you answered that, but go ahead. Could you repeat that? I just you? used, I used, honestly, I just got this Italian loaf of white nickels bread, I think it is. So, um, yeah, I mean, whatever kind of a whiter, squishier bread, you know, the old Wonder Bread <laughs> works. Okay. Well, that's pretty English, isn't it? Yeah. So then I have these, uh, edible flowers here. So you could put some edible flowers on there, make it look nice and pretty. There you go. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and put this one on our frame. I've already got some scones done. One light here. All right. So those are your cucumber sandwiches. Pretty easy. All right, so now we're gonna move on to our smoked salmon ones. Now this is where one of the, excuse me, I'm checking my scones. They're looking pretty good. So this is where, um, the Pullman loaf would have been nice to have um, a really long piece of bread. Scones so are done. Tin wheel. I just looked at them. They probably need, oh, another five minutes or so. It's always kind of have to guess on what your oven does. All right, I'll put this extra scone stuff away. So for the smoked salmon ones, you want to get a lox style salmon, which means that it's the very thinly sliced salmon that you would put on bagels with cream cheese. Um, we're not using a hard smoked, we're using a cold smoked salmon. So we are gonna use a cream cheese with this one. So when I was talking about the size of the bread and because I'm using slices I tried a couple different things last night that I will show you to see how well they worked to try and get as much of a pinwheel as I could so I have here some cream cheese with some regular cream cheese and I have some chives that I just picked right before you all came to my house and I want to go ahead and chop the chives and I want to show you a little trick for chopping bunches of chives because this is just kind of all over the place and it can be kind of hard to hold together. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a paper towel and you're just going to fold it into a long strip just like that. You're then going to bring your chives up and get the loose ones out of there. And I want to make a band around the chives about the middle of the way. So I'm going to fold this over and now I'm going to roll that up. So I now have my chives in a nice little band. So now I have something to hold on to when I chop my chives. So I'm going to start here at the top and I'm just going to kind of slice down. And I'm making nice clean cuts all the way through. I don't want to go back and forth over these because they'll get slimy. So once I get to where the paper towel is, I'm going to flip it around. Now I'm going to go the other side. And then I have some more here that I could chop. I don't really need them, so I'm just going to put some over there right now. And we'll go ahead and gather all this up. And we're going to put that into our cream cheese. 
And you can uh, get lazy if you want and just buy the uh, chai cream cheese at the grocery store. Pull some fresh pepper in here. What would really be good in this sandwich is to use the pork sand, like um, fine herbs and garlic cheese. That would be good. All right, so we need some lemon zest. So I'm using my microplane again. And I'm just going to go ahead and get some lemon zest in there. Just like so. I'll say about half a lemon's worth the amount that I have. All right. And let me check my notes just to make sure I've got quinoa. Let's see. The sandwich brand, cream cheese, chives, pepper, lemon zest. Now call for watercress. Um, I had because I had done this order with the chef's garden, I have this um, great pack of microgreens again. So I'm going to use that rather than watercress. And watercress would give it kind of a peppery flavor. I'm going to go ahead and just start smashing all this together. You do want to make sure that your cream cheese is softened. And before I go too much further, I'm going to check our scones and see how those are. So there we have our nice mix and we want our offset spatula again and I'm going to peek at the scones see if they're ready to come out. All right, just spread a little bit but that's okay and I'd say they just need a couple more minutes. All right, they kind of ended up getting that laciness around them. I think it's because of how I mixed the sugar in. But that's okay. Let's it taste good. So I'll put those in for a few more minutes. All right, so now I want to show you how I did these sandwiches. These have to be done a couple hours in advance because they really, you're going to have to wrap them in saran wrap, and I'll show you what that looks like and then you're going to have to chill them because if you try and slice them right away they're not necessarily going to hold together all right so what i want to do this time i do want to take the crust off now don't throw these crusts away you can go ahead and grind them in your blender or food processor and you've got some breadcrumbs that you can use for um, a meatloaf or anything that you might need breadcrumbs for. So one thing for me, I definitely have not been working as much now that we're not, can't do all the in-person classes the last few months. So I've taken up pottery. I've been making pots in my garage. So I've got all kinds of bowls now that I don't know what to do with. So every time I see somebody, they get to pick a bowl. All right, so this is where you are going to need this little rolling pin. And we want to roll this out, flatten it out, okay? So what I did yesterday when I made some, just to run it, is that the recipe says just to use this size here. But I wanted to try and get a little bit more roll on it. So what I did was that I took a little glue, if you will, and I put a little line of the cheese right here. And then I overlapped this just a little bit. And then I rolled it again. So basically what I did was I fused those two pieces of bread together so that I could get a little bit bigger roll. And you could even do this again and again and again if you wanted to. All right. So now I'm going to take this softened cheese and we're just going to go ahead and spread that. You want to make sure that you leave a little bit free from the end because when you roll it, you don't want all that cheese squishing out. So there we go. That's good. 
I'm gonna go ahead and do some smoked salmon. Just lay some in there. You don't wanna overstuff it. Just do a nice layer. And we'll do that one more time so you can see it. And then I will check on the scones again. And then I've got, uh, we're gonna put everything together. Um, so I go see if anyone's on my driveway waiting for this. All right, so now we're going to take some of these, and again, if you have watercress, use that. We're going to use some of these microgreens in here. Just like so. All right, so now we want to bring this up. And when we roll it, we want to somewhat compress it as well. And I want to pull, it's not unlike rolling a sushi, <laughs> sushi roll. So let's try and get this all the way down like so. I'm going to grab a piece of saran wrap. All right, piece of saran wrap. We're going to take sandwich or the roll the pinwheel and we're going to go ahead and just roll it tight and then I'm going to take the ends and I'm going to twist them in just like that okay and then these are going to go in the refrigerator for at least an hour if not longer and we'll do that one more time scones and we gotta check the scones all right, there we go. That good. The scones are out. And these are actually best warm. Um, even if you make, the, make them ahead of time, I would take the time to just sort of reheat them a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and do, do this again. So again, your recipe just says to use it like this, but I wanted to try and fuse it together just to get a little bit longer of a roll. And it seemed to work, except for now that I got the cream cheese on there. Good thing that's my last one. Carl loves it when these classes are done because there's a sink full of dishes behind me. All right. So if you're in the Hudson area, or if you're in the Akron area, our store is still open. We are open now from 11 to 5, Monday through Saturday. So we wear masks. Uh, it is recommended that you wear masks, but we don't make you wear a mask. All right, there's just some more salmon. And then once these are out, I will pull the ones that I did yesterday, slice those, make a plate of those. We'll talk a little bit about what you can use for your uh, scones, what you can serve with it. And we'll kind of put the whole thing together. All right. You could put capers in here would be good, little red onion. Pretty much everything that you might put on a, a bagel. All right, let's get another piece of saran wrap. Now we'll go ahead and twist that down and into the refrigerator. Again, by the magic of television, I have some here. We'll go ahead and put this tray together and clean up my board a little bit.
All right, let's grab another plate. And I have a few of those microgreens left, so I'm just going to make a nice little pile of them right in the middle and put a couple more of these little flowers on there. Something else you could use is I've got some chive flowers from the garden. This is what happens when you leave your chives too long. Put those in there. Let's make it look pretty. We'll go with a nice little yellow flower so we have something right there in the middle. All right, so this is the one that I did. How I just showed you, these other two were smaller, so I did those with single pieces of bread before I got the brilliant idea to fuse them together. So you want a nice sharp little knife, and you're just going to go ahead and make clean slices. And the other reason you want to chill these is so that uh, cream cheese can firm up a little bit so that they aren't uh, this cream cheese isn't kind of mushing out on you. Okay. Catherine, someone wants to know uh, where you got edible flowers from, and that is exquisite. Um, the edible flowers, so I, earlier in the week, I ordered uh, from the chef's garden in Vermilion their um, uh, best of the season box, produce box. So basically it's, and they ship it overnight for free from Vermilion. And um, I got all, I got greens and spinach and carrots and baby beets and baby sweet potatoes and uh, purple and white asparagus. And they had three little packs like this that had the uh, microgreens. One of them had all these edible flowers in it. And the other one had the micro herbs in it. So it was kind of perfect timing. So it's kind of a CSA box. And if you go online to their website, Chef's Garden, they have all different ones that you can order. Um, so as you can see, when this one's a little bit smaller, this is the single piece of bread. This is the bread that's fused together. And it didn't quite pinwheel as much, but that's okay. It still looks good. It's got a nice amount of salmon in the middle. So we got another one here that we'll put on there. But again, it just kind of makes a nice little display. This Carl's got lunch tomorrow. So I can just kind of go like so. Push these all in a little bit. So then you have your little smoked salmon pinwheels. So those are going over here. We can take some of our, our warmed scones and just put them right on to this plate here. And I've got one other thing that um, was just sort of an add-on. There's really not a recipe for it, but I want to show it to you. So you can buy in the freezer section at your grocery store these Athens Philo cups. There's 15 to a box. They look just like this. I then went also at the grocery store. I bought some already made lemon curd. And I bought a pack of raspberries. So what I want to do is I'm going to take my lemon curd. And you're going to fill these cups with some lemon curd, you know, teaspoon, teaspoon and a half, something like that. Just a nice little amount of lemon curd in there. Put 
those in. You could also do this with chocolate ganache. So it's, you know, like half a cup of cream to four ounces of chocolate chips and you melt them together. Pour that in here, let it sit up in the fridge. It's like a truffle and you can top that with a raspberry. So there's some very easy things that you can do where you don't have to spend a lot of time in preparation on. And we can have a nice little, the only thing I didn't make was tea, because I don't want tea this time of night, because otherwise I won't be sleeping. All right, so we have that. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna top each one with a raspberry. Just like so. And you wanna make things look nice and inviting. Maybe you should drop those by the library. There's some of us who are coming into the building to work and we probably could use the nourishment. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be there I Saturday. Can't guarantee, I can't guarantee the quality by tomorrow. All right, so then in the middle, actually what I wanna do is hit these with a little bit of powdered sugar, give them a little snow cap. I could put a couple more scones in the middle, just kind of fill that hole. We've got some fresh mint. So we could do some fresh mint in there. Like that. Just like so. And then if you want, you could put a flower or two. That pretty one right there. It's like a little nasturtium. I don't have enough for every one, but you get the idea. these right here. It's a little pansy. There's a bowl. There you go. So you can do something like that. So there's that. And grab one more thing. So this is some, I'm gonna supply that up there, English double cream. I bought this at Heinen's. Uh, it's basically like a Devonshire cream, or it almost tastes like um, a mascarpone. So like the Italian version of a mascarpone. Um, so that's what that is. This is some uh, blueberry jam. It's a nice blueberry jam you could serve with your scones. I've got these nice smaller, like fruit plates um, that you could do. So, you know, you can put on a put on a scone and a couple of tea sandwiches like that. Now, if I was truly doing this the way I should, I should have little tongs to serve this with. And then, Basically, we're just put a little bit of this double cream on there, right like that. Sorry, using my finger. And some of the hmm. blueberry jam. Where are you, Jody? You in the in the vicinity? No, nope, I'm in Akron. I'm drooling though. <laughs> I made a mess of my laptop. <laughs> lemon thyme in there just to kind of bring it all together. So there is your afternoon tea, or in our case, it might be high tea since it's some people's dinner time, after dinner for us. Catherine, that is just okay. perfect, just perfect. 
And then here on the scones, I put a little of the dried cranberries on there. Um, I had some um, dried hibiscus flowers from Trader Joe's that I stuck on there just to kind of, but you know, make it look pretty. If you have, this is a nice uh, platter presentation because you can socially distance with it. See, you can get everything socially distanced. And <laughs> <laughs> it makes a nice little serving area. Let us. Well, my question: I want you to make sure you give us hours and things for the store. If anybody wants to come in, the procedure now. Um, and I also want to thank Carl for his fabulous photography. Um, <laughs> go ahead, plug plug the store. All right. So the the store is open Monday through Saturday, eleven to five. We cannot do cooking classes in the kitchen right now because we just can't socially distance in that kitchen. So what we are doing is that if you are on Facebook, uh, on our Facebook page, we have, and, on, and if you go to our calendar at uh, wrsoc.com, I have put up some uh, classes that we're doing through private Facebook groups. Uh, there is a cost to them. They're, most of them are like $35. They're hour and a half classes. And even the teen and kids one I put up for the next six weeks, um, excuse me, on a Monday, really anyone can do them. They're, they're not really specifically oriented towards like small kids. Next week we're doing, Monday we're doing Italian feast. So we're doing uh, ricotta meatballs and, and antipasta salad and we're making tiramisu. So it's, you know, pretty high up level wise as far as, um, you know, not dumbed down or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got one this Saturday night that is a Vietnamese themed class. Mm. The thing about these classes, though, is that, you know, we send you the recipes, we send you the grocery list, the equipment list, um, what you need to prep ahead of time. So basically, you're doing everything that I would do to get ready for a class. You do it through Facebook, uh, you cook along with me, and um, then you get to enjoy what you've, you've wow. made. Very clever. So that's, uh, and then starting July 7th, we are going to do offer in-home cooking classes. So for six to 10 people, that would be your group, family or friends that you're comfortable with. And then we would come in and, and do um, a cooking class that way. Wow. Very cool. Okay. But that's, you know, we really don't know when we're going to be able to have classes back again in the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, just because of all the parameters that we have to. Mm -hmm. And then as far as when you come in the store, I mean, we have plenty of hand sanitizer around. We've got. Um, we, you know, when you come in, we'll be wearing a mask. Uh, we recommend that you wear one, but you know, we're, we can't make you wear one. Uh, so, you know, and then if we haven't yet to see this, but you know, if the store gets overcrowded, we do ask that people socially distance, but that has not happened yet. Okay. I hope it does only because I hope there's that many people who want to shop at your store. <laughs> Other than that, um, we, this class actually will be on the Hudson Library's YouTube um, station. So this one you'll be able to look at and if you have friends who weren't able to attend, uh, they'll be able to experience this on YouTube. Thank All you right. so much. It's so well, nice to see us. you. Carl, thank, thank you. you. It was fun. I hope everybody had a great time. Um, I did, except that I'm really hungry now. Sorry. <laughs> Can't be helped. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Uh, afterwards, uh, I will be sending out uh, a survey, an evaluation like we always do, because uh, we especially need your input as we go forward. We're not sure how long uh, we're going to be doing virtual programming. Uh, how long we'll need to, but we would like your input. So I'll send that out to you as soon as I can. Be safe, everybody. Drive carefully, too. Don't forget that. Take care. Good night. <laughs>